So part of the temple ceremony, shortly after the death of the Prophet Joseph Smith, included an oath of vengeance. So I can't speak to other factions, but the oath of vengeance was part of the Mormon temple ceremony up until 1930. So the oath of vengeance went as follows. You and each of you do covenant and promise that you will pray and never cease to pray to Almighty God to avenge the blood of the prophets upon this nation, and that you will teach the same to your children and to your children's children unto the third and fourth generation. And the penalty for this oath was disembowelment. So we have at least 10 first-hand accounts of this oath of vengeance. We have it from the diary of Heber C. Kimball. We also have it from a man named Increase Van Dusen and his wife Maria. Analyza Webb Young wrote about it in her expose, Wife Number 19. A Mrs. G.H.R. wrote about it in 1879. Apostle Abraham H. Cannon wrote about it in 1889. John Bond gave a statement in 1903. Along with Bishop Andrew Cannon. And in the Reed Smoot hearings, there are three more individuals who talk about it. J.H. Wallace Sr. August W. Lundstrom and Annie Elliott. Is there a doctrinal basis for the oath of vengeance? Maybe. In Genesis 4.10 it reads, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And in the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi 26.3, it reads, And after the Messiah shall come, there shall be signs given unto the people of his birth, and also of his death and resurrection. And great and terrible shall that day be unto the wicked, for they shall perish. And they shall perish because they cast out the prophets and the saints, and stone them and slay them. Wherefore the cry of the blood of the saints shall ascend up to God from the ground against them. And in the Book of Mormon, Alma chapter 1 verse 13 it reads, And thou hast shed the blood of a righteous man, yea, a man who has done much good among this people. And were we to spare thee, his blood would come upon us for vengeance. In 1919, President Heber J. Grant appointed a committee to revise the endowment ceremony which was then done under the direction of Apostle George F. Richards, which he did from 1921 to 1929. In this revision, the oath of vengeance was eliminated, and it was formally implemented in the 1930s. So I think one of two things happened. Either the church realized how effed up the oath of vengeance was, or the oath of vengeance was fulfilled because four generations had already passed away, if you see generations as happening every 20 years. The oath of vengeance is part of the blood atonement and shows just how much Brigham Young hated the government. So yeah, the more you know.